Hello and welcome to the PASCOM training series. Uh, in today's video, we're going to take a look at the topic of trunks. Uh, in other videos, we've gone through call cool distribution and so on and so on, and that's all well and good, uh, but you need to be reachable from the outside world and you need to be able to reach people in the outside world. For that, you need a SIP trunk. Um, Matthias, what is a SIP trunk? Why do we need them? How do they work? So before we know how they work, we should know why do we need them. Yeah. Um, Pascom does not provide his own trunk or PSDN connection for you. Yeah, we don't do any call cool termination to the uh, yes. landline. We are the PBX yeah. and you can choose. You have the freedom to choose which provider you want to integrate. Yeah. So for sure, there are partners um, which we use and which we recommend, mm -hmm. but we are not a SIP carrier. Yeah, so one of the uh, unique features of uh, the PASCOM uh, phone system is that you can, we call it bring your own provider, very much like bring your own mobile device, mm -hmm. uh, bring your own provider. You can choose the provider that best suits your business model and then uh, connect, integrate, register with mm -hmm. the PASCOM uh, phone system. And that's why we created a list mm -hmm. of uh, providers. Uh, you can find it in our documentation where we have templates for them. You can see if they work on premise or in the cloud because it can be different. Some providers just um, provide you a uh, separate line mm -hmm. for it, on-site line. Yeah, they deliver an actual line to your yes. office or And your so whatever. you cannot use them in the cloud for yep. sure. But just go through the list and see if your favorite um, provider is there. There. If not, we have another uh, solution, so to say, uh, speak. Yes, we have um, a generic SIP template which you mm -hmm. can use and build up yep. um, and adapt it to your needs. Yep. The one thing you have to know is for the listed ones, we guarantee that it works. Mm -hmm. For um, non-listed and if you do it on your own, it's um, your responsibility that it works or not. Yes. So this is the difference, but mm -hmm. there is no technical issue or there is nothing which we disallow that it doesn't work. Yeah, so your first point of reference when it comes to choosing your provider, say for example, you've got, I mean, if you're in Germany, you've got Deutsche Telekom, of course we su support them. Um, but if you're in the UK or somewhere else and you have BT, for example, um, they may not be on this list. Uh, first thing to do is check the list, and then if they're not there, check uh, with your provider to see um, how they work. Because uh, mm -hmm. you know if they don't support uh, cloud solutions because they deliver the line to the door, for example, um, then that sort of determines your options that are available. Yes. Yeah. Good. So what else do we need to know? That's it. Choose one. Good. Then? Then we have a separate tutorial if you want to know something about um, the generic way. Okay. So now we go through the way uh, that we add a provider template. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of them. Um, I use, uh, for demonstration purposes, uh, PeoplePhone. PeoplePhone is available in several European countries. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just go to the website and see uh, where they are. And here you have some information you have to put in there. Um, these are provider specific. Yep. So maybe they may re be repeated from template to mm -hmm. template, but they're specific. I like to call it the variable data call, uh, by provider because yes. they're specific not only to the provider but also to your account with that provider. Yes, sure. Yeah. Not everybody shares yeah. the same password, <laughs> yeah. hopefully. Well, hopefully not, yeah. Um, for some providers, uh, we have a detailed descriptions. Um, so let's go into Deutsche Telekom, for instance, where we say this is how the document looks like you get and then you have to put the data out of here um, to understand what to put into our form. Mm -hmm. so, but th normally you should be able to do this on your own, but... Yeah, it's, 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 it's not sorcery. It's something that you can, if you follow step-by-step, yeah. step, uh, work yes. out on your own. We will yeah. see. Yeah, exactly. Good. What you always need is a username and password because we register to the trunk. We have here a username and a password. And, and anyone's yeah. trying to note that quickly, it's going to be changed. So um, yeah. it's not going to help Before the you. video is online, hopefully. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it's not going to help you. So. Okay, so you put them in there. Um, here you can choose different regions because um, uh, PeoplePhone has several uh, support for several countries, as I mentioned already. I use Germany. Uh, you have to enter your country code. You have to enter your area code without leading zeros or something. And then you have uh, to enter your originating number. This is the number without the extensions. So in my case, it's from here to here. Then uh, here we have uh, incoming pre
prefix. Why do we need that? If you want the zero to be a prefix when you dial out, mm -hmm. makes still sense for some uh, situations. Um, and then you get the callback. You want to add the zero that you can use your redial lists and everything. Exactly. Yeah. So if you, I mean, it makes sense to. It used to be the trunk selector, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And in SIP, that's not really necessary that much anymore. It was with the older analog technologies, yes. definitely. But with the new technologies, not so much, except when you're using our client, because we won't be able to call back with the number they called on. Yes, that's true. If you use our clients, it does everything automatically, yeah. and you don't have to think about it. But um, it still makes sense. Yeah. Then um, this template and most of our templates are for real SIP trunks. Mm -hmm. And in a real SIP trunk, you get not only one number. You get multiple, yes. you know, a number a block. block. Yeah, exactly. So A block. And normally the block is ongoing. So mm -hmm. you don't get 105 at the end and then 500 and whatnot. It's, it's normally sequential. So for yes. example, depending if you've got 100 users, it could be uh, 0 to uh, 99 or 100. Um, yes. And this is optimized for that right. issue. Okay. So if you have something that you have five or four completely different numbers, mm -hmm. then you just type in, in here something, yep. and then you can fix it afterwards mm -hmm. in our inbound and outbound rules. We have also a separate video for inbound and outbound yep. rules so you can understand everything. But here we assume that you have, let's say, three digits long. So you have extensions with three digits, uh, let's say 0 to 999 or whatever, so behind that number. And then there is a special case if somebody dials just your originating number uh, or with the zero mm -hmm. or whatever, uh, then you can say what to do with those numbers. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, we put them to our team, which is 201. If you don't know anything about teams, watch, watch our the video. video. Yes. So that's it. Now it configures that. You can see it has to know a lot more information and that's all in the template mm -hmm. so that you don't have to uh, think about or hassle around with some details here. Uh, you can just save it and here is inbound and outbound calls. Per default it's now like that. If somebody dials your number and some three-digit extension, it's one-to-one -one the internal extension. Mm -hmm. So if somebody dials 101, it's 101 internal. Yep. But we'll go into that into more detail in, yes. in another tutorial. Yeah. Then if somebody dials your uh, standard number, mm -hmm. so your originating number, then it's 201. Uh, if somebody does an outbound call, you have to dial the zero, and then it puts in there the caller ID number, and there is a variable at the end, so it puts your extension at the end of the number. Okay. So that's the default configuration. So that's pretty good information there, and you can see that it's all done automatically by the phone system. But the question is, okay, how do I check that it's actually worked? Make a phone call. Make a phone call, right, <laughs> <That's>, okay. <laughs> that's not all. So yeah. that's just joking, but mm -hmm. it's so true. So it is make, very true, make, yeah. make a phone call, and one tip here is... It's not only make a phone call, you actually have to say have something. Have to say something, because mm -hmm. if you're on the cloud, then Maybe not, but if it's on-site and if you did your own firewall configuration, mm -hmm. it could be the case, because SIP is tricky, that it's just one-way audio. Yeah. So always check the complete functionality, call someone, talk. Yeah, exactly. Or call yourself and blow into the phone yeah. and then you can hear it. And it's again. one of the reasons why we actually have the SIP provider database. You mentioned it, SIP is tricky. Mm -hmm. um, and not every provider is the same, sadly. Yes. Um, that's why we do a lot of work for the customer to be able yes. to uh, do it. Um, sadly, we can't do every provider, but uh, that's one of the reasons. Is there another way to check? Sure. We save it. We have to apply the job. If you followed us, you, you learned already yeah, that this, you have to apply. This concept, it's, it's a nifty concept, but it's, it's a bit annoying because you often forget it. Yes. Um, and here you have this uh, information sign. And now you can just click on here and you see registered. And that's what you're looking for. If the trunk is registered, that means he could send a packet, mm -hmm. he could authorize, and the provider could answer. Uh -huh. And that's 90% of the way already, yeah. at least for registration and for signaling, not for your voice because maybe your firewall blocks the other ports which is used for... So the process RTP. would be save, apply, 
click that button, see what it says. Yes. And then if everything's good make on that button, call. make a phone call. Right, uh, that's it on the topic of trunks uh, for today. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time. See you. Goodbye.